PID, the new line of handgun mounted lights from Holosan. PID stands for positive identification and we will definitely test that out today. The first impression is really good, everything is solid, quality made, nothing less than I would expect from Holosan. It has a solid picketing mount with plastic inserts that can fit different kind of handguns. You can tighten it with a Torx or with a flathead screwdriver or I bet even with a shell casing. It has a neat bezel with glass lens. The lights come with a rechargeable 1835 battery and this sleeve inside which I'm not sure why it's there. I would imagine that you could probably fit another kind of battery inside but the official description says that this is the only battery you should use. But I just had to try it and it seems that it works. In a pinch if your battery dies and you really need a light you can use a CR123 battery and the light would work but I think it's less powerful than with this battery. So to charge it you just plug the cable in USB and then plug the other end here. It's magnetic, it just clips on and it charges your light without even the need of removing it from your gun. And then we have a more premium model, the PID Plus, which besides the light also includes a green laser. The buttons are metal and they're ambidextrous and they're perfectly positioned. When you draw the handgun from the holster, you can press it with your trigger finger, with your main hand, or when you have a complete grip, you can use your thumb to turn on and off the light. With the PID Plus and dual version, you have an additional button over here for the laser. This one has a green laser, or the dual with an IR laser. The mounting system is almost the same. It also uses the same charging cable, but on this one, it's mounted on the side. Now, I'm not sure how light savvy you are, but there's always a debate between how much lumens it has and how much candela it has. Now, I don't want to go in too much details, but what I really like is that Holosun made this basic model, the PID, and it has two versions, so a normal one and the high candela version. So what I really want to do today is test them side by side to see which one performs better. So Samo has set up a short course with different kind of targets. They are marked with black shadows of objects. One is mobile phone or a brick, it's a no shoot. And then we have a knife and a pistol. When I started, the first target was at 25 meters and I was not able to recognize the object, so I didn't shoot. Then when I moved forward, I could recognize more of the objects and I engaged them. One thing that you can see is when I was clearing this corner over here, I noticed one knife, second knife, and then I missed the target in the back. I probably did not scan it correctly, but from this target, I set up directly on this one because it was closest, closer to me and my attention was directly focused here. So later on, I noticed the other target with the pistol and shot it. Not sure if this is uh, the limitation of shooting in the dark or maybe one of the other lights will do better than this. One thing that I have immediately noticed is that on the 25 meters, I looked at the target, I saw that it's a strange shape, and just from my logical deduction, I would immediately go for, oh, this is not a brick, it's not a phone, so it could only be a knife or a handgun, and I would shoot. But I stopped myself because that would not be fair, so I didn't shoot it. So at 25 meters, it could happen that you would not be able to recognize the object. When I came closer, I saw that obviously it's a shadow of a pistol and I shot the target. Another interesting thing, when I picked this corner over here, almost the same happened. First, I noticed the target close to me and I shot it twice, but then I noticed the target in the background and shot it three times and then returned for this one for the last shot. So essentially what I did was uh, <laughs> what IDPA uses as a tactical sequence. We didn't rehearse it, we didn't plan for this. It was just how it happened. So it's interesting. This is super interesting to me because there is no clear winner. The normal one gives off more of a cold white light, but it has a more wider beam. And the high candela has a focused cone, but gives more of a yellowish greenish tint. Though I feel like with the high candela light, I can see the target better. And I think it's easier to define the edges of that handgun shadow. I don't know. I think this could be personal preference, or maybe it depends on what kind of situation are you in. Is it really dark? Is it uh, just dusk? What if it's uh, raining, if you have fog? So these lights have different capabilities and I, I think we should do a separate video just testing and comparing them. So if you have any good ideas, 
let us know in the comments below. So the PID Plus actually has less lumens and less candela on the white light, but it also has an included green laser. Now let's be real. There are only very limited amount of cases where they could be used. For example, if you're using a ballistic shield and you have to shoot around it with a handgun. And the other one that I found out was uh, if you have a night shooting competition, a laser can actually give you some advantages. But otherwise, all of the other uses are not really valid. In daylight, you will not see the laser. With night vision, the visible laser is way too bright. It will not work properly. So essentially, it's more of a fun item, but it is super fun. Fuck! The flashbang is useless if you have an empty handgun. Even here, when we had the perfect conditions for using a laser, so I throw a couple of flashbangs, it creates smoke, and you can actually see the laser very clearly. But in reality, when you turn on the light, it just gives you too much information and you lose the laser. So it's really great for movies, for, for science fiction, just for special effects, but uh, for shooting and aiming effectively, I don't think so. There's always one issue with mounting lights on your handgun. Holsters. Now, since these Hulu sunlights are relatively new, there's not a lot of holster options on the market yet, but we already collaborated with Battle Gnome Solutions. They make excellent holsters and they already made a line of holsters for Glock handguns and handguns that are similar than Glock that will fit the Holosun PID line of lights. They have models with passive and level two retention. And the best thing is that since the Arex Delta is so similar to Glock, it will fit in all of these holsters. Even better yet, since Holosun was very consistent with the design of these lights and they are very uniformly made, these holsters can be universal and fit all of the PID lineup. So from the normal standard model to the PID Plus and Dual. Look, I get it. Some of you guys do not like Holosun because it's made in China. Fair point. But you cannot deny that they are really pumping up high quality products with new features that we haven't seen yet, at least not in this kind of form. I'm super stoked for these lights because they're amazing, really good quality, really good functionality. Now one thing that already bothers me about these lights is the switch with double function. So if you press it, release it, press it, release it, it's momentary, but if you quickly just click it, it's constant on. Now, the issue that I have with this is when you do different kind of drills, we're actually trying to use the light tactically. So you're trying to illuminate the target and then turn it off so the potential threat does not see your location. You move and then you engage the light again. What happens is when you're in this kind of stress situation, you will do this. You will accidentally click it, press it, and you'll be constant on. This is something that I really don't like because it happens often and it just bothers you. Now, to be honest, I haven't even read the instructions yet. We received the lights and I immediately mounted them with different guns and just tried it out and I'm super stoked. They are great. And I just hope that there is an option on how to turn this function off. And the second thing is we cannot really vouch for the reliability and quality of construction of these lights yet because we only put a couple of hundreds rounds to it. Sure, I dropped them a couple of times accidentally. We kicked one intentionally, but the true test will be thousands and thousands of rounds shot through the handgun and then see if the light maybe flickers, if the switches still work properly and so on. So for now, great lights with amazing capabilities at a good price. I think this will be the new contender on the market.